That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Gully, the directorial debut of Nabil Elderkin, which premiered at the 2019 Tribeca Film Festival and is being released June 4th theatrically, uh, followed swiftly by uh, an online release, courtesy of Vertical Entertainment. This is this director's first film. Yeah, he's a very notable uh, music video director. He's directed videos for Kanye and Kendrick and Dua Lipa, Frank Ocean, uh, Billie Eilish. Okay, the basic story. Mm -hmm. It revolves around three young men living in Los Angeles, modern time. There's Jesse, played by Calvin Harrison Jr. Mm -hmm. There's Calvin, played by... Jacob Lattimore, mm -hmm. and there's Nikki, played by Charlie Plummer. I thought I read somewhere it was supposed to be slightly dystopic L.A., but I, I don't know. I didn't, get that, I didn't get that either, but anyway. So they're just out in these streets being, like, ultra-violent. They, they initiate, like, a few fights. Mm -hmm. They steal a car. They trick some young like some girls to like party with them and then beat up a guy who's with them. So they're pretty like, like senseless acts of violence, right? Things culminate with Jesse, Kelvin Harrison's character. He appears to live on his own. And initially it seems like his landlord is a man named Mr. Charlie played by John Corbett, John Corbett. Um, we see a, a character witnesses Jesse performing oral sex on Mr. Charlie and then runs to tell Jesse's two friends, Calvin and Nikki. And they are like livid because Mr. Charlie is a, like a father figure to Jesse. So it's inappropriate. And they're like, you know, they're already out here being extra violent. So they're like, we're going to kill him. And they do. They go to... Mr. Charlie's house and kill him in front of his family. So that happens. But then an even bigger gag is we find out Mr. Charlie kidnapped Jesse when he was like four years old. So they have that history. And also Jesse's mute. Oh, I neglected to mention Jesse's mute. Mm -hmm. So the film ends with Nikki being arrested Calvin is shot and killed by some people he beat up earlier in the film. And the film ends with Jesse sort of contemplating what the day he was kidnapped would have looked like had someone intervened. So it's just him standing on the beach like with narration from Jesse. Would that what it were? Would that what it were? And that movie is... Uh, uh, that quote... Well, it, it's, Hail Caesar is... Right, right, right. But who's the actor who said that? Uh, Ray Fiennes. Um, and Alden Ehrenreich. That's what I'm thinking of. Okay. Anyway, that's it for this movie. <laughs> well, it's it, Strangely, it's 81 minutes and feels overstuffed and also... We well, learn nothing. Uh, <laughs> and, and also um, spins its wheels on so many extra moments that don't need to be there. I do want to give a shout out straight out the gate to Robin Givens, who will always look good. Bless her heart. Yes, she's playing uh, Jacob Lattimore's mother. Uh, it's nice to see her in something that's not, a, as of late, like a direct-to-video release about her losing her man or God or something sure. like that. But yeah, it is nice to see her. Okay, so there's a motif used heavily in the film relating to like video games we see these boys playing video games on a number of occasions there are also like some alternate reality visuals of what appeared to be them playing like video ga i'm doing this because at one point uh calvin's character is like shooting his skateboard at a police helicopter and it, it's gra it's visualized like video game graphics so initially I thought like these boys are committing random acts of violence as uh, sort of a response to their connection to violent video games because it feels like very Grand Theft Auto. Unfortunately, because it also makes it feel dated. It, it feels like something like late 90s, early 2000s, you, you know, or even early like Natural Born Killers. Those, all those Gen X movies about the influence of violence in the media on the youth. Uh, and this has kind of an extra component by trying to showcase the extreme trauma each of them has gone through as children. Um, but 
ultimately it, it's not adding anything new to the this discussion and also kind of takes away from the environment that it's supposedly depicting um i wanted i i felt like there were things i did appreciate about it and tonally you know i wish it had stretched further into the droogies and the 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 ultra violence of something like anthony burgess's a clockwork orange mixed with you know brett easton ellis um it has some bones there uh written by marcus j guillory who's a producer on empire I'll just quickly go through my notes. Uh, I was... Well, I'll save this for last. The uh, Travis Scott is in the movie. He plays a video store, if not owner, like he works at a video store that the three boys go into and trash. That's kind of their first uh, public staging of acting out as well together. So while the film seems to focus on these three boys, there are actually six characters and everyone seems to get like equal time almost, which is a shame because we don't get any development from any of these characters. So the three boys, then Nikki, his mom is played by Amber Heard. Joyce. They look the same age to me, but apparently they're 13 years apart. Um, she's like, so Nikki's trauma is he witnessed his dad kill a man in front of his house because this man was flirting with his mom, Amber Heard's character. Then we have... A man named Greg, who we understand has just been released from prison. Played by Jonathan Majors of The Last Black Man in San Francisco. And his only connection to these three boys is that the night he committed the crime that got his ass sent to jail or prison, those three guys were sort of tending to his child. So... And and they and in a flashback, we see that the, the trio witnessed this act of violence. And... He is sort of like placed throughout the film, just bebopping around. I, I wrote down a funny line because he, we see him like three times pushing around a lawnmower in his neighborhood. I'm assuming attempting to like get work, but some character in the film goes, fuck he doing with a lawnmower. <laughs> that made me laugh really hard. Then we have Terrence Howard playing a man named Mr. Christmas. He is an unhoused gentleman. Oh boy. Well, I got trouble for saying homeless. An unhoused gentleman who is just like standing at the corner store, standing on the corner. And I'm convinced they just put Terrence Howard in like some bohemian chic costuming and didn't give him a script. And, and said, just go. Said, just go. Because he's just rambling off. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, I met him in person and it's a lot like that. Um, he also breaks the fourth wall um, at one point. I, I think it's supposed to be, he's almost like the patron saint of this neighborhood as well. Because he has a kind of, so Calvin's character, Jacob Lattimore, is painted as kind of, like he has kind of uh, severe mental health issues potentially with his behaviors. Um, and he is kind of on a similar wavelength to Mr. Christmas. They keep, they keep talking about uh, Lattimore wants to go to, to Venus. There's a, I think they are in school because he has a scene with the principal played by Tom Wright. Um, That's right. And uh, th th his thing is he wants to go to Venus and there, he's, yeah. There's a scene where, oh, and another auxiliary character is D. Ray Davis, is just playing this random dude driving around. Well, he's Calvin's father. Oh, that's Calvin's father? Yes. Oh, I missed that. Well, yeah. so he's not a random dude, he's Calvin's father, but we only see him sort of like just driving around with a younger, I'm assuming his son, who's like three or four, talking to him about the world when he's pulled over by law enforcement and is shot and killed by the police. Mm -hmm. And it happens very quickly. Um, like literally he gets out of the car and says, oh, shoot me. And then the cop shoots him. And then the sound effect of him sliding down the mirror, I, it felt comical and it shouldn't have. It but, shouldn't have. Yeah. Um, so there are a lot of interesting components to this film and overall I found it entertaining, but not in the way the filmmaker intended. It's just so chaotic and ridiculous that the cast itself is really quite impressive. Um, even so in Erica Peoples plays, um, uh, Jesse's, Jesse's mother mom. in the laundromat and the flashbacks only uh, and she's in is it Rules of the Game? Uh, true to the Game. True to the Game <laughs> and True to the Game too. Uh, it's nice to see her as well uh, but yeah it, it's there are times where you feel like it might be hitting its groove and then something really jarring happens like they're driving around in Cal they've, they've already um, invaded that man's home there's they go out driving they're gonna go to the beach in this old jalopy uh and some rude white man calls them peasants 
And so they follow him to his house and assault him and his wife and steal his, what kind of vehicle does he have? Mercedes. And so then they meet these random white girls in town, like tourists, who mistake Kelvin Harrison Jr. as uh, a famous rapper, a famous rapper, a famous musician, and they take them along and there's a your obligatory um, nightclub montage scene. Okay, that scene, so again, a lot of interesting things. I think the tone that would have worked best for me is the scene where they take these two white girls and then like this guy who I think is the brother of one of the girls, they take them out for the night because they think Jesse's a celebrity. And while they're driving to wherever they're going, the boys, uh, Nikki and uh, Calvin, because Jesse's mute, Nikki and Calvin are talking, but they're talking like sort of like Shakespearean style. I, I didn't catch it, it as iambic pentameter, but yeah, like they're, they're... Something old English fancy type of thing. But then there are subtitles that translated to sort of like urban diction. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was very clever. And I, and I think that because the principal scene when Calvin is talking to his principal and the principal saying how smart you are and how I'm so disappointed that you don't like uh, apply yourself. And then there's another scene where Calvin says he's a genius. I almost want it to be like that these kids are like, they have all the bones and all the ability to do more than what their environment and their past has led them to. But, but that's not what it is. Again, it's, it's like they have their own lingo, like the Malcolm McDowell's cohorts in A Clockwork Orange. Like that, that is very much what I kind of wanted it to make its way into. There's a scene where Calvin, uh, his skateboard uh, gets run over and broken and then he buries it. <laughs> well, he's more connected to objects than he is people. And then his mom, played by Robin Givens, she knows he's upset about it. So she says, I got you something that I was going to save for your birthday, but I feel like you need it now. And she gives him a cape. Mm -hmm. I thought that was, again, like some really interesting mm -hmm. things. Um, oh, something I thought was funny was before Mr. Charlie gets killed, John Corbett's character, he shows up to Jesse's house um, with groceries. And then, like, Jesse's being weird, and, like, John, uh, Mr. Charlie drops the groceries, and then he goes, that was $30 worth of groceries. Yeah, where'd you go? Not in L.A. <laughs> $30 of groceries, I can hold in my hand. Yeah. Like, I don't know what he bought for the Well, he's not going to Whole Foods, that's He's sure. not at Gelson's or Erewhon. Um, lastly, the thing that drove me crazy about the story is that these three boys commit a string of violent crimes mm -hmm. during daylight hours with many eyewitnesses they don't even kill everyone so it's like these people know what these boys look like certainly it wouldn't be difficult to capture them but what gets them hemmed up and just the one is that he left his phone in the car mm -hmm. that mercedes they stole i just thought that was so crazy because yeah it's it just so like it, it feels like the Purge as an urban soap opera. This leads me to something I probably shouldn't say, but I'm going to say it. As I was watching it, I kind of thought like, I bet you a non-black person directed this because I feel like the depiction of Los Angeles and whatever they think this urban environment is, it just really bothers me when it's like, oh, just like, I think the area they live in is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, Trying to ascertain where they were, I'm assuming they're either in Compton or like South LA. I thought South LA, but... but home price the average home price in South LA or Compton is high, significantly higher than the national average. Like the house that Calvin is living in certainly is more than five hundred thousand dollars, and the cinematography is showing LA in a way that I think is quite nice. And you likened it to Black Jesus, yeah, yeah. Like it does look like that. Like mm -hmm. it, it looks like a nice area. So I felt like, what are we trying to say about their environment? Because the title of the film is Gully, which means... Like, from the gutter. Gutter, right? So then it's like, are they saying it's hood or ghetto? But then I don't get that from uh, the I th film. I think I thought it was more like nobody cares about one another, which is why sure. we are kind of the belabored point of Jesse again in the laundromat and how there's a little Asian man that's not paying any mind to what's going on that, you know, if people were looking out for each other and showed a little care, that this wouldn't spin out of control in this film. And then Nikki, the... Oh, you know, these three boys are quite handsome, so I feel like the casting of them and what they're doing seems a little, like, off to me. Like, But Nikki and then his mom, played by Amber Heard, who live in the same neighborhood, 
And then Nikki, we see him running around beating people up. It's just like, there is no way. This boy is out here doing that. And, you know, Amber Heard, that role was supposed to be Alice Eve originally. But, you know, they smudge her makeup and give her cornrows and, and fake tattoos. And fake tattoos. And, like, she still doesn't quite look fit. But so if you think about, you know, classic 90s films about South Central, like Boys, uh, Boys in the Hood and Menace to Society and... Um, you poetic justice. Brought up poetic justice and the kind of grit and authenticity that those films have. Um, th- again, this feels like more along the lines of a soap opera. And it, you know, it was shot. It was shot by uh, Adriano Adriano Goldman, who shot Sin Nombre, uh, August Osage County, and um, Dark River for Cleo Barnard. And so uh, very very filmography. And I overall liked how it looked. Sure. Uh, as L. A. is presented, but. I would recommend watching it, um, if not for just the WTF vibe. Um, but and I would love to know what people think about this And poor movie. Jonathan Majors, who... You know, granted, this... this Who's that? He's Greg. Oh, yes. He has nothing to do. And no. I think uh, if you've seen him in anything, is uh, obviously someone to watch. But, but he's probably the most sympathetic character. Right. Uh, and again, this is another Calvin Harrison Jr. holdover, because Monster from 2018 just came out on Netflix. So uh, I, I get the sense that... This is just being dumb. I was so excited about him after Loose. And then Waves was good. Um, well, I liked Loose better. And then that one we just reviewed with him. Monster. Which I thought was a little crunchy. And then now this. And he's he, he's in the trial of Chicago 7. He plays Fred Hampton. Yeah, which that's, you know, I didn't love that movie. but I didn't either. I'm a little concerned. I need him to amp it up a little bit. <laughs> Well, he's done a lot for... Yes. And you didn't see The Wolf Hour with uh, Naomi Watts. Was that good? I liked it. Oh, okay. It was mostly pan, but I liked it. Um, What would you give this film? Two out of five. I would give it two and a half out of five. Anything else? No. Bye. Bye.